What is up guys, it's your favorite YouTube commentator, Ghost Robo, and every once in a while this thing just catches your eye, you know, you're browsing the internet and you see something weird that says, this is a hardest, extremist, craziest platform adventure, and you gotta check it out. I saw this game, Aban Hawkins and the A Thousand Spikes, and I figured for 80 points for $1, it was absolutely worth checking out, because it looks absolutely insane, so I'm bringing you the first Xbox Live Arcade indie game of my Invisible Game series. Now we are in the tutorial here, and it's basic controls. It looks to be like a, a crazy platformer with all sorts of traps and incredible difficulties. We can move, we can crouch, we can jump, we can jump extra high, double jump. Uh, this is the first time I'm playing it, so I have no idea what kind of uh, insanity awaits us, but from the trailer, it looked like it was going to be very, very crazy. Um, I believe it's a Japanese-made game, um, you know, intent on harassing you and hurting your feelings and making everything awful for you. Um, you have this high jump and a normal jump. It looks like, okay, so we also have an attack here with the B or X button as we take on this little scorpion. I don't know what the goal of the game is. All I know is when I read something that says this is a hardest, extreme, craziest platform adventure, we got it. We got to check it out. We got it featured on our channel. If you want to exit game, don't forget to select save, okay? Here is no checkpoint, whatever that means. It is annoying temptation. At first it is nice, but gradually transforms you into a lazy gamer. Don't worry, you can beat. All right, so they have very poor English, and they're suggesting that we don't use checkpoints because they make us lazy gamers. What the heck is going on? And the, fl the flag dies. Get key and into the gate. Let's go to Dreadful Adventure. Good luck. All right, sounds good. So here's the key, I guess, that we're looking for. Big jump. So yes, we have the key, and then we can go into the gate. All right, so tutorial complete. Doesn't seem so difficult so far. <laughs> One thing that's funny that you'll notice here that I, I ju just saw... Um, I don't know why it's asking us to delete file, we haven't done anything, but we have a thousand lives. One thousand lives, so I'm guessing we're going to be dying <laughs> very rapidly. There's things already falling, and the game takes no, oh my god, no, no, no hesitation in, in causing us great pain right from the start. Um, I have no idea. There are definitely one thousand traps, traps at every, every entrance, every location. Alright, so we're going to fall down here and see what happens. I, I haven't really played, uh-oh. Gotta go back and get that block. I haven't really played many Xbox Live Arcade indie games. Um, in fact, maybe only a couple. This is the first that I've, uh, one of the first ones I've ever purchased. There goes live number one. Um, and the reason I guess I don't buy very many is because I'm just not, I wasn't very convinced of the quality early on. I tried a lot of trials. There's another death. <laughs> I tried a lot of trials when the uh, indie marketplace first came out and wasn't impressed with any of them. I and mean, so I haven't really, really check back very frequently, but now that I'm starting up Invisible Games, um, I've been very interested to see how far indie games have progressed. And from the couple I've played, it seems like they've come a long way. You know, stuff like this, is it a fantastic game, you know, worthy of Game of the Year award? Probably not, but a little diversion for a dollar, you know, it sort of has that iPhone mentality, like, hey, if I can play something fun for 99 cents and it's on my Xbox 360, uh-oh, I didn't even know there were spikes there. Shoot! It's probably worth it for 99 cents, and this game... If we can get past the first level, maybe worth it. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> oh god. Oh my god. You think Super Meat Boy was hard? You guys ever play that on Xbox Live Arcade? Um, fantastic game. I absolutely love Meat Boy. I've never. I have not finished the game. Um, it is very, very challenging. I don't know what we're supposed to do there because that that arrow shoots as soon as we jump up there. So, if I can get you past the first level here, maybe you can take a better look at this game. I didn't see really any videos of this game uh, on YouTube. I saw a trailer. But that was about it, um, so I'm kind of excited to be bringing you this content and let you check out a Ban Hawkins and the 1,000 Spikes, and there are surely 1,000 Spikes. Look how many there are already in stage number one here as we go, and of course everything is like a chore, right? It's not, oh, just push the block down in advance, we want to, you know, ease you into the game. It's like, no, we are going to whip you from the start with insane difficulty and make sure that you know we hate you by making you avoid all these blood-filled spikes and push these blocks everywhere. All right, so... Round one complete, now we just have to get back without killing ourselves. Go! Alright, yes. We are doing okay, we may. Yes, we get past this first section. I don't like that spikes can come out any time from the floor. That's kind of dangerous, kind of worrisome. Um, kind of has me in fear. Oh, God. Yes! Ah! We've already given up six of our lives, um, and I'm, I'm really hoping that by the end of this episode, we can at least be one level... And um, what do you think of indie games? Like, what is your experience with indie games? Have you played a lot of them? Do you like them? Do you have any favorites? I mean, definitely let me know in the comments below if there's an indie game you really love or think is really worthy of me playing or checking out. Let me know. I'd definitely be happy to go look at it and maybe even feature it 
in an episode of Invisible Games. This seems to be very uh, heavily based on pattern recognition and memorization, so now that we know where all the spikes are, we can progress through. And I don't know how I feel about that kind of game design, you know, I'm more of someone who would rather, uh, you know, figure things out firsthand, and the first time it sort of feel like, oh wow, that was really cool, and I kind of just was able to realize it and figure it out on the go, as opposed to, oh yes, we're going to uh, learn by trial and error. Alright, so we have this thing here we gotta be very careful of, so we can go get the key. Alright, we got the key. No! All right, now we have to put move this block over, jump back up, and where's the exit? It's up there. Okay, so should we go, which path should we go? The way with the spikes from the floor to the left, or the way with the spikes on the wall to the right? I'm gonna go with the floor spikes. No, God, and we get trapped underneath there. Ah! All right, but now we know what to do, and so we're gonna come back and do this very 8-bit style, you know, the whole trial and error thing. Not really prevalent very more, you know, much more in game design. I was talking about in my Little Big Planet 2 playthrough how I don't feel like difficulty has to necessarily equal game over screen, like you can have difficulty without deaths. What, what prevents difficulty um, besides a challenging level or a challenging section of platforms? It's okay if I try that section 1,000 times in a row without technically dying because I still have to complete that, that section. I think the game over screen and the whole death and dying is kind of an archaic method of uh, kind of faking challenge um, when you may already have it, you know, just from playing the game itself, because Little Big Planet 2 has some challenging platforming segments, and I don't really need to die to feel like, oh, that was a, a true challenge. So, let's be extra careful here, run real fast, go, 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 yes, run, 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 no, and we die. <laughs> oh my god, this game is brutal, like, if you're having a bad day, or you just want to relax after, after getting home from work, or, or anything like that, don't buy this game. Please don't, please don't torture yourself with this, a ban Hawkins and the a thousand... Thousand spikes because it is kind of a nightmare. Um, this uh, this level is what three screens long, and we haven't even haven't even gotten to the end of it yet. Um, and it's all these hidden <laughs> hidden traps and hidden spikes that like to come and prey on us when we least expect it. Sort of like your older brother did when you were when you were young and you didn't know what was gonna happen or when he was gonna pop out and scare you, and then boom, you'd get shocked from behind when you least expect it. I'm hoping that we can complete this level here. And then we'll wrap up this episode of Invisible Games, but if you're enjoying this, if you like watching me die thousands of times, I might be happy to play more of a Ban Hawkins and the Thousand Spikes. Just let me know in the comments. If we, uh, no, we killed ourselves. Awesome. Good work! If we get, like, th let's say, um, how about 30 comments? Eh, 25. We'll go 25 comments requesting more of Ban Hawkins and the 1,000 Spikes. Um, I will play more, and you can watch me torture myself via Xbox Live Indie Games. Um, let's let's give it one more go here and see if we can beat this level. I'm pretty, you know, I'm pretty good at video games, and so the fact that I can't even get to the end within a reasonable amount of time says something about, maybe not the difficulty of the game, but about the, the randomness and sort of the uh, feature and factor in the game, which is that things pop out at random moments, and you kind of can get yourself stuck in trouble, like back there where all of a sudden I had no nowhere to jump, nowhere to go. Um, so let's run quickly. Hopefully we can beat this one here. Come on, guys. Give me all your strength. Cross your fingers. Hold your hands up to the sky. Send me your energy. We gotta beat this bad boy. Alright, so be careful. Let's pick up this key. And now let's go back. So we gotta remember that arrow at the top. Alright. Three, two, one, go. There's gonna be an arrow. We'll jump it. We hit there. Yes! Boom! Level one complete. Stage clear. I feel like I just won the game. And that's only level one. I don't know how many levels there are. Let's give you a quick glimpse of level two here. And before we wrap up, I want to make sure I say thank you very much for watching this fine episode of Invisible Games. Um, if you like the video, hit the like button. I always appreciate that. And again, let me know in the comments if you want to see something new, or if you want to see more of good old Aban Hawkins. But guys, until next time, we will see you later.